Welcome, everybody. We are in the spotlight today with Celebrity Talks and Tales, the wonderful Felicia, who's going to answer all our questions about everything you ever wanted to know about being properly, formally attired and looking your best on your day of celebration. You know, suits, they make me drool. What can I tell you? I mean, just yum, right? Usually does the same for women, too. <laughs> Is that like a man in a uniform? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> something but like that. A of lingerie, basically. Ah. Have you thought about doing that in addition to the suit side, or you're just suits? Just suits, no dresses, no anything else. Suits and tuxedos. Mm, okay. But I guess you can pair up with a uh, lingerie shop or a bridal salon that would allow, no, no, you don't network? We're good. Okay, you're good. All right. But I happen to know that you do network. We do tons of networking, yeah, and we partner with lots of bridal salons, but we'll okay. take care of women's wear aside from suits and tuxes. All right. I got off on a tangent about that whole, you know, ooh, 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 and, and you, you had me going. So celebrity, tux, and tails. You don't have to be a celebrity, do you? Not at all. You just want to be treated like one, right? Oh, see, look at you. That, I told you you had all the right answers, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be tux and tails either, does it? To be treated like a celebrity? Well, or no, a but I mean... Suits celebrity well. tuxedo tails it doesn't have to be a tuxedo because i happen to know that i'm wearing a suit right now from you folks yes um always love it when you're wearing our suits so yeah we do suits and tuxedos a type of tuxedo is a tails so there's all of the above <laughs> okay i guess i'm taking things just a little too literal um as i want to say i'm ex excited to welcome you to the event ensemble spotlight and it, it's really all about you and what you do. So why don't you kind of give us a little bit of a philosophy story as to what you do? So Celebrity Tucks and Tails is a family owned menswear company. We do suits and tuxedos for rent, purchase or custom made. And we can do suits or tuxedos for men or women. So um, we're all about service and um, our motto is the selection you want and the service you deserve. Oh, so you've got that tagline down. Just perfect. I like it. Um, but I happen to know for a fact, but I'll let you tell us, what makes what you do different than all the other tuxedo places or all the other suit places? So our focus on service uh, allows us to go beyond the traditional brick and mortar. We do have two stores in Tempe and Peoria at the moment. Uh, but we also do on-site delivery, group fittings, where we'll come to the group and measure everybody, um, and then pick up as well after the event. Okay, so three things there, and we want to kind of discuss each of them because they are really, really unique to Celebrity Tux and Tales. So the first was that... Our delivery service. So... We'll actually, um, for a limited number of events per weekend, because we want to make sure that we can focus on your wedding. So just like any other wedding company that has a certain number of slots per weekend, we'll come out to you and deliver all of the suits, um, have all of the guys try them on either at the rehearsal if we want to do the day before, or we'll even get them ready for the day of the wedding. And then uh, do on-site alterations, make sure everything fits um, and really customize that experience for the wedding party. It's great if you have guys who are flying in from out of town, they don't have to stop by a store, pick anything up. You can just make sure that everything's ready for the guys. Um, wedding planners love it because they know that we're on site to make sure everything's going to fit. If there's 
the button that breaks when they're getting dressed, that we're there to fix it for them and make sure that everybody's ready for pictures, right? Right on time. Picture ready. It's so, so mm -hmm. crucial to the process. And so you deliver these suits and you, and you fix them and all that. But I also know there's like this party thing going on sometimes, like the guys, right? What is this all about? So that's, that would be our group fitting. And so we offer that for all of our wedding couples. You don't have to have the delivery service to get the group fitting. Um, you schedule it for all of your local guys and we'll come out and measure everyone all at once. And so a lot of our grooms choose top golf or modern round, or we can even do like a backyard barbecue. If you just get all of the guys in one place, we'll come measure everybody so that it's something for the guys to do similar to like the bridal dress experience for the girls, get them all together at once and we'll measure them. So it's not necessarily attached to like a bachelor party because that's separate. This is a social thing that the guys do. You can do it during the same time as the bachelor party. We just prefer to be at the beginning of the night. We've also had it where, um, the guys were all local and they were going to be flying to Aspen. This was a few years ago. They were all flying to Aspen. So we met them at the airport and they, we measured them at Chelsea's kitchen outside of security. And then they all flew off to the bachelor party weekend. That is so smart. And now this pickup thing, I mean, so if I get drunk and change into my jeans, I don't have to worry about getting that suit back to you. How, how does that work? Uh, the pickup, just depends on every wedding party is a little bit different. Uh, had a wedding a couple of weekends ago where you can leave it if there's a groom's room on site. So we do this a lot of times at the views at Superstition. They'll leave it in the groom's room and then we'll pick it up from the views after the event. Or if everybody's staying at a hotel, you can leave it at the front desk of the hotel and we'll pick it up from there. So we just pick all of it up from one place, whatever's the most um, convenient location for everybody to leave their tuxes after the event. So, so it's like a designated drop spot that everybody is, is going to be at and, and then they don't have to come back to the store. Correct. That is so smart. You guys are brilliant. And um, what happens if I uh, can't, if I, if I don't fit my suit, like I gained 10 pounds or I lost 10 pounds, you know, the COVID-19. <laughs> Typically, we want to do the measurements for all of the guys about four to six weeks out from the event. It minimizes the chance of gaining or losing too much weight between when you get measured and the actual event itself. Uh, and then we take care of alterations. We have the different sizes available. Usually, um, we're able to accommodate all of that because we own our stock locally. So it makes it easier for us to switch out sizes, make all those changes, as opposed to some of the national companies where their inventory is not here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, we shared an experience this morning together. We heard Randy Bartlett at the event ensemble meeting this morning, and he talked about working with your clients versus for your clients. Um, right. If I come in and say that um, I'm getting married in chartreuse green and my bride doesn't like that green color and so what? Do you coach the coach, uh, the grooms, or do you just give them what they want? So very rarely do we get like <laughs> a groom who just wants this really outlandish outfit that's different from what the bride wants. Most of the time, our education process focuses around um, the fit and how different styles, if you wanted something that's a little bit more of a vintage look, it's not going to have the same type of fit that you're thinking about um, nowadays it's on trend. That's really much more fitted. Uh, it could be that, um, a lot of times there's education about the color of your shirt. Guys are insistent. They want a white shirt. And we're like, well, if your bride's dress is not bright white, if it's off white, if it's a shade of ivory, even though it's not a yellow ivory, you want to pair it with an ivory shirt because you want the bride's dress to be the brightest color on all of your pictures. You don't want to have a bright white shirt next to a dress that's not white because it's going to make the dresses look yellow in comparison. And there are different shades of white, are there not? 
so many different shades of white. So if you don't have a bright white dress, you don't want to put a bright white shirt next to it. It's okay usually if the guy's shirt is a little bit darker than the bride's gown because you're seeing so very little of it between the tie and the suit. You're not seeing a huge piece of fabric from the guy's shirts, but you are seeing a lot of the bride's dress. Okay. So you don't want the dress to look yellow. So let's go down the list. And I know this is going to be dated by the time uh, this is shown, you know, three, five years later. And so we'll acquiesce that we know that. Um, bow tie or tie or either? Totally depends on personal preference. We see both of them being really popular. Right now, the bow tie is more of the trendy look. Um, but that cycle changes. And who knows, back in five years, it could be the trendy look again. Well, um, and trust me, I know I've still got uh, both in my closet. Um, vest or no vest? We typically recommend using a vest, at least having it, because you're, when, you, when the guys inevitably take off the jacket and they're on the dance floor, by the time you're cutting the cake and mm -hmm. your jacket's elsewhere, you still look put together. It still looks like a full outfit. Your shirt's not coming out of the pants and sweat stains, any of those different features are masked <laughs> for by a vest and it just keeps the look together. And the right vest isn't going to, if it's a three-piece vest, isn't going to stand out that much from the suit jacket. They're made to mirror the suit jacket when it's on. So it doesn't really detract from the look if you're not really a huge fan of vests, but it, it does a lot for keeping the outfit looking together at the end of the event um, versus but then vest versus suspenders, because you can't do both so, there. <laughs> you can't see suspenders with a vest on, that's for sure. <laughs> but actually, if you're wearing a vest, we typically have a pair of suspenders on underneath the vest oh. for all of our guys, because it keeps the pants up where they're supposed to be so that you don't see shirt between your vest and your pants. A belt only keeps your pants to your to your body, it doesn't keep it up where it's supposed to be. So um, most of the time, most of our people are gonna have both suspenders and a vest. Oh, so that's a great tip by the way. So I'll have to pull out those suspenders that came with the last suit you gave me and wear them. <laughs> Cause I wear the vest over it. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps everything up to where you can see it. If you're not a fan of the vest, having the pair of suspenders keeps everything where it's supposed to be and also kind of gives you that complete look when you have the jacket off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. socks? We don't include socks. Such a personal preference and a personalized style that makes for a great groomsman's gift. Uh, it's fairly, it helps you kind of control what they're going to wear for their socks, <laughs> uh, but also has something cool for pictures too. So because it's so specialized, we don't currently offer socks. Um, we leave that up to the individual party if they want to include it. But you've seen some pretty wild socks. Oh, yeah. You can do so many cool things with socks. Mm -hmm. um, superheroes and color patterns and personalized. Oh, flags. There was a, we had a Canadian, half Canadian, half American group. And depending on what country they're from, they had a different pair of socks to represent the Canadian or the American flag. Very cute. Very cute. But is the old adage, black pants, no white socks, still true? Oh yeah, definitely don't wear white socks unless you're wearing a white suit. Okay, good. And especially, shoes? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Especially because um, the slimmer your pant is, which is the trend right now, your pant's not gonna cover the bottom of your shoe. So you're going to see your socks. Definitely don't want them to be white because it's gonna make you look like Steve Urkel versus just having a pair of like black socks or if you're wearing the right type of shoes, no socks. Um, but no white socks, no athletic socks. Okay, good. Back to the pants. Are we down to stovepipe style where we're talking really, really narrow at the bottom? Not necessarily. Well, some people, yes, you can have that thin of narrow of a leg, but really, unless it's fairly wide leg, the top of your shoe is going to be more broad than your pants. It's still not too tight. You still have to be able to sit down and it's not going to be smaller than your calf is. Okay. So, and and now tell me about the shoes. Oh, we're seeing a lot of brown shoes, and that kind of makes sense for 
um, the current state of everything with people having backyard weddings and more intimate elopements or even just out in the desert. Brown shoes make sense. You don't see the Arizona dirt as much on them or it's more a little I, bit more casual. I never would have come to that conclusion. I thought for sure I was going to get you to tell me why would you wear brown shoes with a blue suit and yet you've just explained it. Yeah, we see it all the time. The only time I would say very rarely do we see brown shoes with a black outfit. But mm. No, I don't want to see that. That To me, yeah. that's like white socks with the black pants. <laughs> it can be done cool. Most people don't have like the complete look and vision for it. So most of the time you're going to see black shoes with a black outfit. But otherwise, brown works with pretty much everything else. How oh, fun. Um, no ruffles. No. So pleated is different than ruffles. Yeah, that, that was my next question. Go ahead. <laughs> it makes for a very formal look if you're looking for like, really high-end black tie. The problem with the pleated is usually it's, um, usually it's only in white. So you have that issue of the ivory shirts for the bride's gown. Mm -hmm. um, if it is an ivory shirt, because of all the different layers, the ivory looks a lot darker. Um, and then usually it's not quite as fitted of a shirt. People want the more fitted look and the pleated is more of a vintage look. So it's not as fitted. And ruffles have not come back. Do you think it'll For come like, back? Ruffles, yeah, ruffles are never coming back. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. Ryan Gosling wore it on a few uh, red carpet events and I was a little afraid it was going to come back in style, but it definitely did not. So that's okay. awesome. Um, speaking of not coming back, the cummerbund. The cummerbund is an awesome idea if you're wearing a black tie outfit and you don't want a vest. Ah, so, okay. And the reason why is because when you have your jacket buttoned and you don't have a vest on, seeing that little triangle of white underneath the button of the jacket is really distracting. Like your eye wants to go down to the white triangle that... Um, nobody wants to be looking down during pictures. You want to be looking up at people's faces. So it just masks that and makes it a little bit more polished for pictures. Very good. So we use for buns all the time. Yep. But mainly black ones for black tie events. Interesting. And cufflinks? We have a convertible cuff. So tuxedo shirts that have convertible cuffs. Mm -hmm. So every single one of our shirts uses cufflinks. Um, and we have seven different styles. So yeah, we use cufflinks on every outfit. Excellent. What did I miss? Hmm. Pocket squares are a really cool way to add a pop of color if you don't want things to be too distracting with the rest of the outfit. We see a lot of black bow tie, black tie, like black tuxedo with just a pop of color there instead of everywhere. Um, a splash of red. Yeah, red or we see more like the blush pink or light ah. blue. Um, red is a very bold color. People who like red want red in a lot of places. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Wow, this is exciting. Um, because as you can see, I'm somewhat of a clothes horse myself. Um, so who is your ideal client? Who could best benefit from Celebrity Tux and Tails? That's such a broad question. Um, most wedding parties, especially if you have guys from out of town, it's it's easy to fall into the, the lie that you have to use a national chain if you're getting married and you have a wedding party with people coming from different places. Um, especially if they're getting their outfits locally um, where they're like picking up before they travel. If they're traveling here, you don't want them to be losing it in their luggage or um, once they get here, realizing that they have a totally different style than everybody else because you didn't get them all at the same time. They were being prepared by the same people. Um, we do a lot of wedding parties, quinceaneras, um, pretty much anyone who needs formal attire, we can help with. And there is an advantage to not going to a chain, but to going to a family owned business like Celebrity Tux and Tails. Always, there's definitely. So any local company that you go to is gonna be much more focused on your service. They have a lot more skin in the game than somebody who is just working for an employer that um, they're not really invested in your experience like we are. 
And that's truly goes back to your slogan, your tagline, which is? The selection you want and the service you deserve. And, and that is on point with everything that I've experienced with Celebrity Tux and Tales. And I can't thank you enough for taking the time to visit with us today. Of course, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Do you have a closing thought? Um, just that, it's definitely about the experience, right? Because at the end of the day, even if you do buy your suit, that it's really the pictures and the experience that you had from the wedding that make the biggest impact. Stop, 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 wait. You can buy the suit? You yeah, mean, we do. Wait a minute, you mean not just rent it, you could buy it? Yes, you can buy it. So there's plenty of renting is cheaper than buying that or buying is cheaper than renting myth. If you're buying it, you're still buying all of those other pieces. The suit might be cheaper, but you have shoes and belts and all of the little pieces and alterations that add up, right? But regardless of whether or not you find it worth it to buy or rent, really the thing that you care about at the end of the day is the pictures <laughs> and <laughs> the experience that you had when you went to the store and picked it up or the delivery portion. Um, and if you had a bad experience, if, if it didn't fit, then the pictures are going to reflect that. And even if you get a refund on something not fitting, you can't get a refund on all of those pictures or a second try on all of that. So you really want to have somebody who cares about making sure that it fits, that the shirts don't detract from the dress, that all of those different pieces work together, the synergy of it all, and that you're being that somebody cares about the whole picture of your wedding, not just whether or not mm. you got the suit that you asked for. I um, love that. And process. and just just so that we're clear, whether you're the bride or the groom, socks are nice, but a suit. Now there's a gift for your wedding party. <laughs> Tag grooms do that. Yep, buy the suits for the guys. So never know. Options are endless. And that's what we love about Celebrity Tux and Tales, that not only do you care, but the options and the choices are endless so that you can look your best on your special day. Thank you again yep. so much, Felicia. You're welcome. Have a good night. Or day. You too. <laughs>